These movies will make you feel like falling in love again. Welcome to It's Christian Dude. And today, I'm giving you romantic movies you need to watch part one. Henry Roth, why didn't you tell me you were a secret agent? I'm afraid that's not an option, Lisa. Linda. I know, I changed your name for your protection. Before we start, please don't forget to subscribe and like this video. Click the notification bell so you'll be notified for more upcoming videos. Number one, 50 first dates. Are you staring at me or her? Cause you're starting to freak me out. Directed by Peter Siegel, 50 First Dates is a 2004 American romantic comedy film starring Adam Sandler, Drew Barrymore, Rob Schneider, Sean Astin, Blake Clark, and Dan Aykroyd. It follows the story of Henry, a womanizing marine veterinarian who falls for an art teacher named Lucy. Realizing she has anthrograde amnesia, he resolves to win her over again each new day. Just in time for Valentine's Day, 50 First Dates is a spin on the Groundhog Day notion of a day that keeps repeating itself. This time though, the recycling takes place entirely inside the mind of Lucy Whitmore, who was in an accident that caused short-term memory loss. Every night while she sleeps, the slate of her memory is wiped clean, and when she wakes up in the morning, she remembers everything that happened up to the moment of the accident, but nothing that happened afterward. Do you have any idea who I am? I've never even met you. Adam Sandler. It's gonna be all right, Luce. Don't call me Luce. I barely know you. Sweetie, you're sort of dating him. Sorry, I'm not better looking. Drew Barrymore. Okay, this is her. Pretend you're attacking me so she pulls over. What do you think you're doing? Come on over here. Take my pineapple. Help me, please. I'm dipping your big ass. Oh! Oh! Wow. Go! Oh! Oh! Enough, enough. Are you okay? Yes, okay, yes. I'll be right back. Hey, come no, here. no, 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 no. Number two, 500 Days of Summer. I love the Smiths. Sorry? I said I love the Smiths. You've, you've good taste in music. You like the Smith? Yeah. To die by your side is such a heavenly way to die. I love them. Holy. A 2009 American romantic comedy drama film by first-time director Mark Webb from a screenplay written by Scott Neustadter and Michael H. Weber, and produced by Mark Waters. The film stars Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Zoe Deschanel, and employs a non-linear narrative structure, with the story based upon its male protagonist and his memories of a failed relationship. I think we should stop seeing each other. Just like that? Just like that. Start from the beginning and tell us what happened. The film received Best Original Screenplay and Best Screenplay Awards at the 14th Satellite Awards and 25th Independent Spirit Awards, respectively, as well as two nominations at the 67th Golden Globe Awards, Best Motion Picture, Musical or Comedy and Best Actor. See you, boyfriend? No. Who needs it? We're young, might as well have fun while we can. And... Wait, wait, what happens if you fall in love? You don't believe that, do you? What? It's love, it's not Santa Claus. Did you ever even have a boyfriend? Of course. What happened? Why, why didn't they work out? What always happens? Life. So get over her. I don't want to get over her. I want to get her back. Number three, A Walk to Remember. Wake up. This 2002 American coming-of-age romantic tragedy film is directed by Adam Shankman and written by Karen Jansen, based on Nicholas Sparks' 1999 novel of the same name. The film stars Shane West, Mandy Moore, Peter Coyote, and Daryl Hannah, and was produced by Denise DeNovi and Hunt Lowry for Warner Brothers Pictures. Hey Carter, so I'll see you after school? I'm in your dreams. A Walk to Remember, is a love story so sweet sincere and positive that it sneaks past the defenses built up in this age of irony. 
It tells the story of a romance between two 18-year-olds that is summarized when the boy tells the girl's doubtful father, Jamie has faith in me. She makes me want to be different. Better. After all of the vulgar crudities of the typical modern teenage movie, here is one that looks closely, pays attention, sees that not all teenagers are as cretinous as Hollywood portrays them. Maybe you inspire me. Sounds like bull. Which part? All of it. Well, it's not. You know, I, I was getting along with everything fine. I accepted it, and then you happened. <laughs> Number 4, About Time. My name is Tim, and this is the year that would change my life forever. Happy New Year! Happy New Year! I just didn't know it yet. About Time, is a 2013 British romantic comedy drama film, written and directed by Richard Curtis, and starring Dono Gleeson, Rachel McAdams and Bill Nye. The film is about a young man with the ability to time travel who tries to change his past in hopes of improving his future. As sweet, familiar and reassuringly bland as rice pudding, Richard Curtis About Time, evokes a sense of deja vu, not least for anyone who's seen The Time Traveler's Wife, a conceptually similar love story that also co-starred Rachel McAdams. I'm Tim. I'm Mary. It's my mother's name. I remind you of your mother? Obviously I should have thought this through more. Could you give me one second? I'm Tim. I'm Mary. I love your eyes. Do you? I love the rest of your face too. I haven't even looked further down, but I'm sure it's all fantastic. I'm sure it'll be better next time. Well done. Some people make a real mess of it the first time. <sighs> Amateurs. About Time is a comedy about love and time travel, which discovers that, in the end, making the most of life may not need time travel at all. If it make your life the way you want it to be. Time catches up to all of us. My son. My dad. I try to live every day as if it was the final day of my extraordinary, ordinary life. I hope I see you again. You will. My whole life depends on it. Lan Kwai. Lan Kwai Fon. I can, I can walk you there. Number five. Already tomorrow in Hong Kong. Already tomorrow in Hong Kong is a 2015 romantic drama film written, and directed by Emily Ting and starring real-life couple Jamie Chung and Brian Greenberg. The two of them set out into the neon gleam glamour of Hong Kong on a night-long walk and talk. Their bantering conversation has all the markings of a successful, albeit accidental, first date, punctuated by sightseeing. Are you hungry? I'm always hungry. All right. I'm gonna take you with the locals. There's really hesitant at first, but this is, this is, this is really good. It's been driving crazy. I think I got it. There you go. Hey, to eat politely is not to eat at all. Meandering through nighttime streets pulsing with energy and possibility, they fall into a winding and carefree conversation, buoyed by an undeniable attraction. As effervescent as a perfect first date, Emily Ting's charming directorial debut takes full advantage of the chemistry of its leads, the playfulness of their exchanges, and the magical landscape that is Hong Kong at night. On our way back to the airport, we can catch him. You know we won't. Yeah, I'm probably not. Okay. Number six, before midnight. And how did you two meet? We met about 18 years ago. We kind of, sort of, fell in love. And a decade later, we ran into each other. No, no, no. You wrote a book, and I read about it, and went to look for it. Oh, it's pretty romantic. Richard Linklater's trilogy, comprised of Before Sunrise, Before Sunset, and Before Midnight, is Michael Apted's up documentary series for love-stricken cinephiles, returning to the story of Jesse, Hawk, and Celine, Delpy, every nine years. Link later introduced us to the couple when they were 23 years old and had smooth and youthful faces full of dreams and hopes, it returned to find them slightly older and wiser at 32. In Before Midnight, they're 41. They have wrinkles and seem tired and worried, yelling at their children to not go too far while swimming in the sea. Before Midnight is quiet, 
shrewd and sparse. It is unassuming and unafraid to poke fun at its own sporadic pretentiousness. It was filmed in the home once owned and inhabited until his death by Patrick Lee Fermor and his wife Joan. Built in Cardamele, on the Peloponnese coast in southern Greece. I assure you, that guy you vaguely remember the sweet romantic one that you met on a train? That is me. Number 7, Dear John. Thank you. Don't worry about it. I'm Savannah. John. Nice to meet you, John. Lasse Hallstrom's Dear John tells the heartbreaking story of two lovely young people who fail to find happiness together because they're trapped in an adaptation of a Nicholas Sparks novel. Their romance leads to bittersweet loss that's so softened by the sweet characters that it feels like triumph. If a Sparks story ended in happiness, the characters might be disappointed. They seem to have their noble, resigned dialogue already written. Hemingway wrote one line that could substitute for the third act of every Sparks story, isn't it pretty to think so? Why don't you get your hands off? Why are you scared of who I used to be? You don't scare me, John. Well, you scare me. I gotta go back. Just like that. So where are they gonna send you? Right in the middle of it all? So I'll see you soon, then. I'll see you soon, then. Dear John, tell me everything. Write it all down. That way, we'll be with each other all the time, even if we're not with each other at all. It's a full moon here tonight, which makes me think of you. Half a world away. Letter number eight. Letter number 33. Dear John. I miss you so much, it hurts. <laughs> it tells a story of John Tyree, a young soldier home on leave, and Savannah Curtis, the idealistic college student he falls in love with during her spring vacation. Over the next seven tumultuous years, the couple is separated by John's increasingly dangerous deployments. While meeting only sporadically, they stay in touch by sending a continuous stream of love letters overseas correspondence that eventually triggers fateful consequences. A lot can happen in 12 months, John. Hi. I'm sorry? I just said hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. Number 8, could, Eternal uh, Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. Cold. Yeah, okay, yeah. yeah. You're not a stalker or anything, right? I'm not a stalker. You're the one that talk to me remember that is the oldest trick in the stalker book really there's a stalker book mm -hmm. okay i gotta read that one it's one thing to wash that man right out of your hair and another to erase him from your mind eternal sunshine of the spotless mind imagines a scientific procedure that can obliterate whole fields of memory so that for example clementine can forget that she ever met joel let alone fell in love with him and she looks at me like she doesn't even know who I am. Excuse me? Can I help you find something, sir? Propelled by Charlie Kaufman's smart, imaginative script and Michelle Gondry's equally daring directorial touch, Eternal Sunshine is a twisty yet heartfelt look at relationships and heartache. At its core, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind could have been just another love story. Refracted through Kaufman's wonderfully weird prism, it's something truly memorable. The result is a cinematic vagueness that makes the film less aesthetic yet more persuasive. This is how dreams really look, like reality, only less so. Remember me. Try your best. Number 9, Everything Everything. This is my whole world. My nurse, my mom, my sickness. I'm 18 and I've never been outside. If I did, I would probably die. Everything Everything is the latest best-selling young adult novel to find its way to the big screen. You will be content enough to simply bask in the company of 18-year-old Amanda Stenberg, Rue, in the Hunger Games franchise, and 22-year-old Nick Robinson, the two attractive leads who star as Maddie and Dolly in this adolescent romance. Blessed with bright blemish-free faces, a precociously articulate way with words as they discuss calculus and literature, knock em dead smiles and effusively emotive hair, this pair's presence puts a welcome sheen on an old thematic chestnut, the destiny-driven infatuation that won't be denied, even in the face of a potentially lethal disease. Everything Everything was directed by Stella Maggie, and was adapted from the novel of the same name by Nicola Yoon. 
Maddie, what are you doing? Go back inside. No, Holly, I have to know if I'm really sick. And the only way that I'll know is if I'm outside. Maddie, what's wrong? I'm messing up your life. My life is better with you in it. Madeline! You're all I have left. I can't lose you. I'm willing to sacrifice everything just to live one perfect day. When I first moved into the neighborhood, I felt like I was gonna lose my lunch. And number 10, flipped. Being the new kid was the most cruel and unusual punishment ever invented. Why is your hair? <laughs> hey, where's your girlfriend? And that was just the beginning. There are moments in adolescence when your feelings about romance turn on a dime. Maybe it's hormonal. The girl you thought was a pest becomes the object of your dreams. The boy you've had a crush on for years begins to seem like a jerk. The timing is off. Sometimes you can look back half a lifetime and see how things might have happened differently if you hadn't been so stupid. Rob Reiner's flip does the looking. Here is a lovely movie about a girl who has adored a boy ever since he moved into the neighborhood in the second grade. She even likes his smell, and it is true we cannot love someone who isn't aromatic to our hearts. All through grade school and into high school, she pursues him. They're like the runners in Keats Ode on a Grecian urn who pursue each other for eternity without ever drawing closer. In Reiner's film, they flip and start running in the other direction. The coming-of-age romantic comedy Flipped, from director Rob Reiner, takes Bryce and Julie from grade school to junior high, through triumph and disaster, family drama and first love, as they make the discoveries that will define who they are and who they are to each other. But one day, I started getting this really weird feeling. Somewhere between confusion and absolute terror. There's a bee in her hair. There's no bee. Are you freaking mental? Julie Baker, you hate her. So much what's so weird, I don't think I do. It's quite a girl. Every once in a while, you find someone who's iridescent. And when you do, nothing will ever compare. And that's romantic movies you need to watch part one. Watch out for part two. Be sure to subscribe here on It's Christian Dudes. You flip? What's the matter with you?